Hi, I'm Susan Lander. I would like to be considered for the Hay House live online event and the radio show. I live in New York City and I'm a psychic medium, a lawyer, and a writer. As a medium, I could communicate with spirits. I can see, hear, and feel them. But I'm also a lawyer. And so like many of you, I often face the conflict between what I know in my head, that logical part of me, and what I know in my heart or my intuition. I often find myself asking, should I follow what I know in my heart, even though I know it isn't logical? I'd like to tell you a story that I feel could benefit each and every one of you. Something happened that took me out of my comfort zone. By following my intuition and taking a risk, I was able to have an important experience that allowed me to move forward on my path with a new confidence. As a medium, I connect with people's loved ones on the other side. I also connect with their helpers on the other side. I call them spirit guides who help us on our paths while we're here on earth. But lately I've been doing something different. I've been recording the last messages of spirits who were famous while they were here on earth. This started last year when out of the blue, Ben Franklin showed up in my kitchen. So I interviewed him. Ben was followed by a parade of spirits. Farrah Fawcett, Steve Jobs, Gandhi, Andy Warhol. All of them had amazing things to say. Lessons in peace, prosperity, innovation, love, and leaving early with their lives unfinished. But somewhere in the back of my mind, I was really uncomfortable with this. And I wondered how would people respond? Just three weeks later, I got my answer. I boarded the number one subway train, headed downtown to Greenwich Village to meet a potential editor. I walked to the Ground Roast Coffee House, feeling like a real New York writer, with two manuscripts tucked away in my bag. The first was a story. It involved past lives and reincarnation, which are actually kind of mainstream these days. But the other, tucked secretly away in my bag were the first five interviews of my famous people book. The whole way there, I was conflicted. I wanted to tell them about these amazing interviews, but I thought it would be much safer to tell them about these stories. It went around and around in my head. What should I tell them? Finally, the moment of truth arrived. I got to the coffee house. We sat down, had some hot chocolate, and he said, Tell me about your book. And I started telling him about my storybook. I said, well, it's a book. It's kind of like the time traveler's wife. It involves past lives and reincarnation. But then I stopped because something had just welled up inside me and I really wanted to tell him about my interviews. So I said, well, there is something else I've been working on. Imagine if you could talk to spirits who were famous while they were here on earth as far back as 2,500 years ago. They can look back at their lives and their choices, see what they would have done differently, and teach us lessons we can use to help us make our lives better now. This is that book. He looked at me, read me one. I said, okay, and went into my bag, and then I kept thinking, which one, which one? I tuned into my intuition and I kept hearing, Andy Warhol, Andy Warhol. And I thought, okay, it's fun, it's quirky. And I said to him, Andy Warhol. And he sat back in his chair and he crossed his arms across his chest and he looked at me a little suspiciously, I thought. But I was committed, so I took a breath and I moved forward with it anyway. And I said, Andy Warhol's interview began with the phrase, the problem with us outsiders is we even live outside our own relationships. The problem with us outsiders is we even live outside our own relationships. But I was so out, I was in. It was a gay joke. But the editor jumped and he looked totally shocked. And he leaned in across the table, he looked right in, he looked right in my eyes and he said, you know, I was Andy Warhol's first editor in Interview Magazine. No, I didn't know that, but I thought, wow, what have I gotten myself into? But the editor continued. When I worked at Interview Magazine, Andy brought me one gift. It was a purple scarf he brought back for me from India. And on it was a gold third eye and the words, be so out, you're in. He said, seriously, seriously, I'm not making this up. The same words were on the scarf. 
Oh, I believed him, especially because Andy Warhol had popped in behind me and he thought this was so funny. And I realized he had set this whole thing up. And the thing is, I almost missed the chance to have this experience. But because I followed my intuition and took that risk, I was able to move forward on my path with a new confidence. So if I can leave you with one message, it's to trust yourself, trust your abilities and trust your intuition. When something is pushing at you and it really feels right, take action, don't push it aside. So I ask you, what's pushing at you? Think about it. When I took action, I was able to complete my book. My interview with Andy Warhol ended with a question. What was your favorite work of art? His answer, me. So be your favorite work of art and let it reflect the real you.